What's up guys, it's Dan Barracuda. I got another mixing video. This is a basic one. I'm just gonna show you how I set up my session. How I set up my tracks. Color coding, organizing, buses, all the good stuff. The very basic thing I do when I get started. So let's say someone sends me their tracks to their song or I'm using my song, whatever. But in this case, someone sent me tracks to their song. So this is what I do. I go over here, I got the folder, I downloaded the files, I got all the tracks here. Very simple, thanks to him. You got everything laid out perfectly. You got the vocal one, vocal two, everything looks really nice. I bring it over here, I drop it in, boom. Okay, drop it in, everything's nice and consolidated. Um, so I'm gonna highlight everything and bring everything to the beginning of the track. So I'm gonna go like this, boom. And before I even hear, before I even need to hear it, I mean, I can hear if I want while I'm doing this, but in this case, I'm just gonna look at everything here and what do I have here? I got bass, drums, electric piano, guitars, and vocal tracks. Everything looks nice, okay? So everything's here, everything's, okay, everything's nice and organized. So a couple things I do. First thing, I need a master fader, okay? Stereo, master fader, okay? You gotta have your master fader. Next thing I do is I like to have the plugin, the first plugin I put on the master fader is this is sound field over here? Go to stereo with. What's going on here? I uh, probably shut up somewhere else. No. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's right over here. You see this? Boom. Right over here. I'm gonna bring the width all the way down. Whew. That enables me to mix in mono. So if I bypass this, it's back in stereo. But if I'm doing EQ, the first thing I want to do is test for bad frequencies, and the best way to hear that is mono. Okay, but when you're working on panning and stuff, obviously you want to have that bypass so you have it on stereo. So that's the master track, right? Now I decide how many stair how many bus tracks am I gonna add? So I got bass. That I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a bus track for bass, and this is just like my preference, right? I like to have a bus for all the main instruments. So I'm gonna have a bus track for bass, one for drums. Might not have one for electric piano. It doesn't seem to be a super prominent instrument in this track. So I probably won't do that. But that's up to you. I, I totally could, but just for this, I'm not, okay? Bass, drums, guitar, bus, that's three. Vocal bus, that's four total, okay? I'm also gonna have a reverb bus, and I'm gonna have a mix bus, okay? So that's a total of six, and I'll talk about this, okay? So I got six, I'm gonna have six, I'm gonna go to new tracks, stereo, you gotta go to aux input. Bus tracks have to be aux tracks. So here we go. I'm going to start doing my labeling. Bass, bus. Drums, bus. Guitar, bus. Vox, bus. I like to do reverb in all caps. And then I'll say mix, bus in all caps. All right. So I got my mix bus over here. And then I like to organize them. And then you'll see what I do after. I like to color code everything, which you see. Got the Vox bus over here, guitar bus over here, drums bus over here, where are we? Bass bus over here. Okay, now color coding is important, guys. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to look at this shit like green and blue all the time, right? Bass bus, this, the colors I tend to do for bass bus. Let me bring this over here. I like to make the bass purple. I like to make the drums orange. Piano, I'll keep it nice and blue. I make guitar green, actually. Green guitar, green guitar. Okay, I like to make the vocal red. Reverb, nice and bright, like pinkish purple, like this color right here. And then mix by something different. Maybe something just like, like that, right? Yeah, cool. Okay, so now you gotta assign the inputs for the buses. So let's start with um, the bass bus. So you go to input over here. Select your, you go to bus, right? Bus menu A, and I already have pre-written things. So for bass bus, I'm gonna go to bass right here. For drum bus, go to in, uh, input, bass menu A. Where are my drum bus? Ah, okay, guitar, guitar bus. I'm just gonna do clean bus for clean guitar. 
Vox bus. And otherwise you would just make it, right? So if you didn't have these things written out, you would just pick a random one like bus 87 and then you would name it. Okay, so Vox, and I would call that Vox, but vocals bus. But here I already have one. Uh, where's my Vox bus over here? And then reverb, I got a reverb, exclamation mark, written pre-made over here. And then for mix bus, where's my mix bus over here? Okay. Now you wanna, I hit command and click. To, I forget what the term is called. It's like, uh, ugh, man, but it just makes it soloed like this. Like, so it's always solo. So you don't need to mute it or solo it. I hit only on the buses, drum bus, boom, guitar bus. I'm hitting command and click, command and click. Sorry, I'm forgetting what this is called. Reverb like this, mix bus like this. Okay, bass is usually always in the middle. So I'm going to hit uh, option click to, or you can just, you know, do it manually, but option click to bring it to zero. And everything else will differ. Maybe Vox, some of it will, sometimes you put Vox in the center. Sometimes you play around with some panning stuff. So I'm not going to do that. So bass is over there. Okay. So now you got to assign the tracks to the bus. So the output of the bass has to go into the input of the bass bus. So I go to output, right? I'm over here. Output bus. Got to look for bass bus. There we go. So now the bass is being wired, <laughs> sent to the bass bus. Drum, same thing. Output of the drums track has to go into the input of the drum bus. Where are we? Drum bus. Guitars, so I hit, if I'm gonna do it for all three, I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna hold shift and option, click. Shift, option, click. Bring it to clean bus. All right, same thing with vocals. Shift, option, click. Output, over here, bus. Where are we? Vox bus. And then the reverb is going to be later. Let's say I'm starting to mix this thing and I definitely want vocals. I definitely want reverb on the vocals. So I'm going to go to the Vox bus or, or a particular one. One of the tracks that are, you know, one of the vocal tracks I want reverb. Let's say like vocal two, I want to crank it with reverb, but vocal one, I don't. So I would handle this reverb with sends. So I would do send. Boom over here. To reverb. Where's my reverb? Like that. But right now, there is no reverb on the reverb track, so I'm going to add reverb. And I bought this $50 reverb called Valhalla Vintage Verb. Whatever, you can do D-verb, whatever stock reverb you have, or any one that you bought. So this is the reverb that's going to act as glue for my whole song, right, for my whole track. I like to bring the highs down. As a starting point, I like to put this between like 2.5 and 4. We'll say, depending on how like ambient the track is going to sound. Nice and low, 2.81 seconds. That's all I do, just to start. So now, if vocal two, I want if I want vocal two to really have a, like a ton of reverb, I'll click this and I can control how much reverb. Oh come on, where are you? Where are you? Oh come on, man. Come on, dude. There it is. Okay, it's over here. I gotta drag it into the screen so you can see it. Boom. And I'll control it over here, right? And that'll control how much reverb is being sent from the reverb bus, actually from the vocal two audio, being how much of this is being sent to reverb. And you can pan it, you can decide how to pan it. Oh, I want vocal two to have to shoot reverb only on the right side of the track. You can do cool stuff like that, okay? And you can add reverb anywhere you want via sends, okay? So the mix bus, every, so you want everything to be sent to the mix bus, okay? Watch. All this reverb, everything. I'm just going to shift, shift option, go to output. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? I can't just do everything. I'm sorry. I take that back. Bass bus, right? Because the bass is being sent to the bass bus. Drums is being sent to the drum bus. Guitars to the guitar bus. So you want the buses, right? And this buses to go and the reverb to go into the mix bus. So I'm going to hit shift option. All right. Mix bus. Cool. Everything's nice and organized. You see that? Look how look how nice this is. Everything's really nicely organized. Bass going to the bass bus, vocals into the vox bus, everything like that. And all the buses are being sent to the mix bus, and the mix bus is then being sent to the master. I got it on mono, and the width is like zero. But if I'm done with EQing and compression, everything sounds good in mono. If everything sounds good in mono, it's gonna sound amazing in stereo. Okay. And then you can work with your panning and stuff. You bypass that. I hit command click to do that. Boom. 
and then you can do like your official like to affect the entire track you would add eq or compression or whatever you'd like to the mix bus this controls everything that's how you set up your track that's how i set up my track and um color coding i think is really important not everybody does it but i i, th I find it super effective i really like to see my session this way uh, other people would probably disagree but I like how I do that. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Stan Barracuda, check out the home recording blueprint if you'd like. And uh, check out my deep dive. I send emails once a month. And I uh, hope, you, hope you dig it, man. hope this video was very uh, helpful for you. Let me know what you thought, okay? Let me know how you like to set up tracks. All right? Peace out, guys. I'll talk to you next time.